Why is my asexuality so hard to accept? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I encounter a lot of people through Ace Dad Advice, uh, people who send me questions, who share their stories with me, and there's a recurring theme that comes up again and again in a lot of those conversations. It's, I'm having a really hard time, I'm really struggling to accept my asexuality. So people tend to articulate a lot of confusion about their identity. They don't understand what's happening and they don't understand why it's going on with them. But they also tend to articulate a lot of shame around having that confusion. When they see that other people in the world don't share that same confusion and that same struggle. And people also share a lot of shame around the struggle they have with accepting that they're different, accepting that they're experiencing something that others don't seem to be experiencing. So why do we struggle so much with our asexuality? Why do we have such negative ideas about what it means to be ace? And why do we have negative ideas about us being ace? Is there something fundamentally wrong with us? that we're having this difficulty? Or is something else going on here? So I wanted to make a video about why it's hard for us to accept that we're asexual. And for us to really understand that, we have to understand something called the cycle of socialization. The cycle of socialization, as detailed by Bobby Harrow, is basically a way to understand how we're taught and how we learn to play the social roles we're assigned when we're born, and also to identify how those lessons get reinforced as we move through the world. Now, the cycle of socialization has five important qualities we all must remember. One, the cycle is pervasive. That means it comes from all sides and all sources. Two, the cycle is consistent. That means it's patterned and predictable. Three, the cycle is circular, which means it's self-supporting. It feeds itself. Four, the cycle is self-perpetuating. That means it's intradependent. It isn't relying on other cycles or other systems to operate. And finally, the cycle is often invisible. It's unconscious and often goes unnamed. So these five qualities make the cycle of socialization a very, very powerful thing. And I will see as we explore this cycle why these qualities and this cycle as a whole play such an important role in why we struggle with accepting our asexuality. So, you know, we don't start out hating ourselves. In fact, we start out as blank slates. Before we're born, we have no sense of and no choice in the identities we're going to inhabit. We're starting from zero. We have no biases, no stereotypes, no prejudices, no history, no habits, no traditions, and no preconceived ideas of who we are and what that means. The cycle begins when we're born into this world. When we're born, we are assigned a set of identities. Gender, race, sexual orientation, class, religion, cultural group, ability status, and the like. Some of these identities are incidental to the family in which we're born, and some are just guesses or assumptions from the people around us. But regardless of where they originate, these identities are assigned, and they are believed to be the truth of us. No debate, no question, just what is. And these identities are either the identities that are dominant identities, culturally believed to be the norm, or their marginal identities with a set of expectations attached to maintain that marginalization. So for ace people, we generally move into this world and are assigned allosexuality. From the time that we are born, we are assumed to be allosexual. Our parents, our families assume that we are going to grow up to be just like them. We are going to grow up and experience sexual attraction. We are going to grow up and want sex. All of those things are assumed from us from the very beginning. We have no say in that decision. We have no say in what identity, especially the identity of allosexual, is assigned to us. The cycle continues into the first socialization 
the first places we're taught what these assigned identities mean. Now, this part of the cycle is facilitated by the people closest to us, our families, our guardians, teachers, friends, people we trust, people we love. Now, they've been living in this cycle for a while now, and they, in this early stage of our lives, teach us the meaning of the identities we're told we occupy. They teach us how to fulfill the demands of those identities. They also teach us what kinds of identities are undesirable and the repercussions of behaving outside of our assigned identities. But here, in this part of the cycle, the stakes are low. You know, maybe we'll get scolded for not following the rules. The stakes are only high enough to ensure we stick to the path laid out for us. So for many of us, you know, the first socializations are very simple things. We are assumed by our parents or other or their friends, you know, to have crushes on other toddlers, uh, or the friends that we hang out with, the kids that we make connections with at, and on play dates. Or, you know, like when families get together and the kids play, they make jokes about us, you know, oh, look, they're so cute together. Oh, look, they're little boyfriend and girlfriend. All of those small cues are telling us how we should behave and how we should feel as allosexual people in the world, even if we're not. Those lessons are going to stick with us through our lives. At this point, we're not even really aware that we're learning these things. We're not cognizant of what boyfriend and girlfriend means or what the expectations around that will be later. We're just taught that this is what we should be. This is what we can expect to be. This is how we can behave in order to fit in with the world around us. Once we move out into the world, beyond the small close circle of our immediate families and trusted adults, we enter the next phase of the cycle, institutional and cultural socialization. In this phase, larger systems in the world assume the role of teacher and reinforce the lessons we learned at home about the identities chosen for us. Schools, churches, television, the legal system, business, culture, art, media, books, movies, all of these larger systems work hard to reinforce the expectations we're working under. But in this phase, the stakes go up. The punishments for stepping outside of the expectations are harsher. Social stigmatization, rejection, persecution, and sometimes even violence are now the punishments for not adhering to your assigned identities. The quiet lessons of the first socialization are now much louder and more aggressive for anyone who doesn't line up with their assigned identities. Not adhering to the rules that support the norms of the culture can lead to dehumanization, stress, self-hatred, confusion, fear, and silence. This part of the cycle is where most of us are when we are first figuring ourselves out as ace. We go through our interactions with the culture and the world at large, absorbing a lot of really important messages about what is expected of us and what is bad about what we may feel if it's different from that. You know, the world tells us all the time that allosexual is what we should be, that we should be wanting sex, we should be experiencing sexual attraction. All of the stories that we consume, all of the messages we receive, the culture pushes on us again and again and again, saying allosexual is what you're supposed to be. That's what everybody is. So much so that, you know, culture basically says that allosexual is a completely natural thing. It is the natural thing to be. And if you were not that, you are somehow less than human. And we look out at the culture and see that people are rewarded for adhering to that allosexual expectation. You know, allosexual people get to see themselves represented all the time. Allosexual people have their relationship celebrated. Allosexual people get patted on the back for being allo and for pairing up and doing all the things that allo people are supposed to do. The whole culture is designed to support the specialness of allosexuality. And in this phase, we are also taught the ramifications of not being allo. If we don't want sex, if we don't experience sexual attraction, 
we are bombarded with messages about how negative that is. We are bombarded with messages that say, well, that's unnatural. Well, there's something wrong with you. Your hormones are messed up. You're immature. You're still behaving like a child. You need to grow up. You're just over anxious. All of these messages get pounded into our heads that a that when we deviate from the path of allosexuality and experience the things that asexual people experience, that we are somehow being less successful, less complete, broken human beings. We are taught by the people around us and the world at large very clearly what to believe about how we feel and what to believe about what is expected of us. Whether or not those things are true, and spoiler, those lessons, those things that are those messages are not true. So if we do nothing, the cycle just continues. We either adopt the identities and roles of the cultural norms and operate as expected within our society, or we exist in that space of fear and self-hatred that the cycle demands of us for not following the rules. And the whole cycle begins again, returning to our families who reinforce the expectations again, we going out into the world that further reinforces the rules again, and landing where we land again and again. So this is why we have such a hard time accepting our asexuality. The cycle of socialization has been working on us from the moment that we are born. It's been teaching us from the second we get on this planet what is expected of us, what is good, and what isn't. And what this cycle tells us is that allosexuality is the thing that's good. It's the thing we should do. And asexuality is bad. Asexuality is unnatural. It's wrong. It's broken. The reason you have such a hard time accepting your asexuality is because accepting your asexuality goes against all of the years of cultural teaching you've had from the moment you're born. That is a massive, massive amount of education to undo. So it's important to understand that you are not the reason you're struggling to accept your asexuality. You are simply behaving as you have been socialized to behave. All of the confusion you experience, all of the fear, all of the shame that you are experiencing around recognizing that, hey, I may be ace, asexuality may be what I am. All of that negative stuff that you're experiencing isn't a fault of yours. It's what you've been taught to do. It's how you've been taught to respond. So what can we do? Well, we can choose to not promote the status quo. We can choose to not do nothing. Instead, we can change. We can raise consciousness. We can interrupt this cycle. We can educate ourselves and educate others. We can take a stand. We can question. We can reframe the ideas that are in our heads. That direction takes us outside of the cycle of socialization. It takes us into a place of more acceptance for ourselves. So we have the power to shift this cycle. We have the tools at our disposal to change up the participation we have in this cycle of socialization. We can identify first all the messages that don't come from us, but come from this cycle, that come from what we've been taught. All those negative messages, we can identify them and say, you know what, that's not a truth. That's not coming from me. That's not coming from inside myself. That is outside of me. That is outside. That is part of the cycle of socialization, and I can reject it. And we can replace those ideas with different ideas. We can replace those ideas with the ideas of positivity. Asexuality is a completely natural way to be in the world. Asexuality is not a broken sexual orientation. It's just another sexual orientation. Asexuality is just another way, a different way of being in the world. It is not unnatural. It is not immature. It is not a physical ailment. It is not a deformity. It is not a deficiency. It's not brokenness. 
We can take out all of those negative messages that we've been taught all our lives and replace them with those messages. And in replacing the negative messages with the positive messages, we can set ourselves on the road to accepting our asexuality, accepting ourselves. And that is what we want to get to. So why is it so hard for us to accept our asexuality? The cycle of socialization is why. We are taught from the beginning that we shouldn't be who we are. And those messages that we've been taught from the beginning, from the start, are not your fault. They're not your responsibility. And you can push against them and replace them with something better. Replace them with something positive so that you can live your best ace life. Thank you.